when you're trimming the LED tape you can use a normal scissors fine enough you can technically go down as far as the solder points however there are some uh, black alignment tabs that look like uh, paragraph bars brackets and you can use those as a guide for your scissors if you happen to slip to the inside and cut that way essentially what you'll be doing is breaking the circuit from there on if you make your cut at the one foot mark bad the rest of the four feet in this particular length won't go off but if you attach power a segment afterwards it will but the back ones won't or you may find there's another break in the circuit in that case all you have to do is jump wire from one segment to the other on each of the contacts with a bit of solder why don't I demonstrate that so if I happen to cut here and we apply power all of a sudden it's not there however all I'll do is put a little solder between each of these two joints and presto so the cut occurs here this entire segment is dead first I'll just try putting a little blob of solder in there and see if that makes the connection or not nope so next we'll try just blobbing a little solder in between each of these contacts So if your cut happens to go in too deep, what you'll need to do is jumper And voila, we are jumpered. So it's just a matter of bypassing wherever that cut is you do. And by soldering a single wire to two of the points next to each other, you save yourself a little trouble. You could certainly wind up with a lot of wire on the sides here, which would be too much. However, it's much easier to simply cut this now. absolutely want to minimize the amount of exposed wire here because you don't want to have a short later on that actually burns it out rather than simply shuts it off and actually I bet I don't even need this negative line now that I think of it let's try real quick nope Because of where the cut was, all I had to do was bypass this, and it feeds all of that. Nice. In fact, these two LEDs are probably getting fed from this line. This LED is getting back fed from that line. So I'm actually going to desolder these lines because don't need them at all. And just to be safe, what I'm going to do here is get some standard rubber cement. There we go. It might be a little heavy, but I do absolutely want this insulated. So because I had the positive wire jumping that one segment, I may have cut into this side the negative as well. I'll know in a couple seconds. Typically, if the LED tape is not marked positive or negative, there is an R listed on the LED tape, 
for a resistor next to the resistor the bottom of the R is typically positive but that is not always the case and it doesn't hurt if you try one or the other so I've got a break right here and I can see where I cut way too low let's try it from the other end and see if there's another break in there so yeah there's one right away <laughs> So let's go with this end. And I can see right where I cut down too far. So don't stray inside these bracket lines when you're cutting. That means you've gone too close. And it happens to be the same area where I jumpered the last one. Be careful not to burn yourself. It hurts. Oh, that didn't make it too far. <laughs> And one more to go. You can see how deep the cut is right in here. Sometimes it's not too bad, but it looks like sometimes it really is. Oh, and one more jumper to go. So it looks like I just accidentally killed two full segments. No problem there. I think I cut this long, in which case I can just join these two together. And get rid of some annoying jumpers as well. So 
Well, let me go test fit this in the station and we'll see how much I can get rid of or not. And yes, indeed, I was two segments uh, too long on my overall cut. So I'm going to be able to simply pull these out and it'll be fine. So what I'll be doing essentially is uh, just soldering these two joints together. And don't get me wrong, this will not be easy. First, make sure your polarities are correct. So the top of the R is on one side on each of the strips. Pull the tape back on each side a little as well. If when you're cutting, cut a little long because then you may be able to join some a uh, bit of it a little easier than you would otherwise. And I'm going to try and overlap this just slightly. It only has to stick long enough for me to get a solder point. <clears throat> First up though is tinning these contacts. Hey, look at that, it works. This is always going to be a delicate point, so I'm going to have to be careful with it. So while I'm at it, I also have to solder up a lot of leads onto the uh, docking arms. There are six cuts, half a foot each, that's one yard. So it's a simple matter counting off six segments. One, two, three, four, five, six cutting and then moving on. And it looks like I got seven on this one. Meow. 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 So to each of these I'm going to attach about an inch, maybe two inches of wire. I'll attach these into the docking arms and then we can look at assembling the entire docking ring area. This should take about five minutes. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> 